All right. I think this is uh, episode four. We're going to get started here on the Blue Ox Running Podcast. Like we usually do, we have a couple guests, but we're going to actually... Well, this is the first time we have two guests on at the same time. If you're watching the video, you already kind of know what's going on. We're in the front of the store. Um, If you're just listening, you will be revealed who the guests are later. But Alicia, before we get going on the guests, like always, help me help you process your week. What is one word that tells me a little bit about your week? Uh, Running or personal? Personal first. Uh, Traveling. Traveling. Traveling where? All over. All over. All right. We'll hear about that in a little bit. One word that helps me know where your running is at? Um, building. Building. I'm building. You're building. Okay. I took that differently. All right. But we're going to get started. Here is our nice little intro music. So what's your spring running goal? To qualify for the Boston Marathon. Claim the beer mile title. Training for a triathlon. 20 minutes again under a, in a 5K. To run happy. Balance running and family. Finish Grandma's Marathon. Do not die. <laughs> Fast, 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 fast. Let's go! Faster, slow! Let's go! Faster, slow! Let's go! All right, all right. I usually wait for that last mood to, to join in here and interrupt the music. Faster, slow, let's go. That is our motto here around at Blue Ox Running. And if you're watching the video on YouTube or Facebook, we are in a different spot. We are not crammed in the back of our stock room, which is, I actually like it back there. It's a little bit more intimate, but I like it up here too. We put a different couch up front. We have a little bit more of a lounge up front in our store, kind of by the shoe wall. And we actually don't even have on the wall what we're eventually going to have, which is a big chalkboard. And we're still kind of making some spring cleaning adjustments to the store so thank you for everyone that's kind of bearing with our construction but we're going to be better for it later but alicia i remember one word building is your running word talk about running first actually How, why are you building are you running in a building it's nice out now why aren't you running outside <laughs> i'm building my mileage i'm oh. about five weeks out from my race and what so, race is that i don't understand um get it done half in Menominee. Yes. A shout out to them. Um, he was just in here. And yeah, so... And Karen was too. Karen came in from Menominee. Right. They're back and forth kind of from Colorado and Wisconsin, and they love doing the Get It Done run. They have a 5K. They have a half marathon. The week after Eau Claire Marathon, which is actually a really good week because it's a totally different course. It's pancake flat, and uh, you get kind of on the country roads. Eau Claire, you're running downtown a little bit more, and it just has a different feel. Mm-hmm. It starts in the Burger King parking lot. <laughs> yeah. So Burger King parking lot. Um, so what what are you expecting for this buildup? I know this is different than any other buildup that you've had. Um, what are you expecting for the half marathon if you're building? Honestly, just to have fun. Um, as you learn more about my past and running has always been competitive from little on. And so, of course, I want to perform well. And I've been training and like building and slowly building my mileage and adding in some workouts. But the main thing is just to go out there and have a good time. Yeah, very good. It's the first race, like in how long? Uh, eight years. Yeah, long time, right. And we've had, you had a couple half marathons when we had Shane, which is our first kid. He just turned nine, yeah, which and I blows re- my mind. Yeah, he, I was like nursing him before the race and then <laughs> we like finished and I was like, give me my baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, I was carting around Shane thinking it was, it was totally insane having one baby at the race. And that was insane at that point in our life where we had our first kid, but, but you especially have hauled around all three kids to some of my races and it's just like nine years old Shane turned and it kind of woke me up a little bit like this is kind of this is TMI no one really cares actually the numbers though work out this year where we're both turning 36 we met when we were 18 so half of that half of our lives Alicia and I've met and then half of that Shane just turned nine so we've been parents for half of that it's just getting we have the number boy over here yeah I'm always doing math and caring less about the people but more about the actual numbers that's (laughs) that's my game all right. Uh, so what was your other word for how your life is? Travel? Yeah, it was spring break and the two actually kind of relate because whenever I'm home or traveling, it's harder for me to fit running in, which right. I don't know if other people relate to that. But So spring just, break, right? Where'd yep. you go? 
Um, I went home to my parents in Sheboygan, and it's. I was just telling our guests, it's beautiful there. There's Lake Michigan. I can run right along there. It was gorgeous. So awesome. So travel, building. I feel like right now, I, I guess I said it last last podcast too. I mean, we're doing these about every month, right? So last time we talked with Dina on podcast number three, um, we were like. 10 weeks out from the Eau Claire Marathon, just in the grind of like the worst of what I felt was the worst of like the ice and the snow. Um, it's all melted since then, right? So we're in the beginning of April. It definitely calmed down and the snow melted a lot quicker than we all thought. We had a, a, a contest with our group run to see how quick the snow would melt outside of our store, which there were just like feet and feet of snow. And everyone said like April or May, some people said June, and it ended up being... Um, in March. So we have no snow in front of the store right now. We're running on the roads. It's actually getting to be like 60 degrees this weekend, which is going to be warmer than normal. Um, so we're full, we're full, full blown into spring, but we're not quite at like the races yet. I feel like people are putting those fi- final touches on their training, getting out for those long runs still, and it's still kind of a grind. Well, not to be pessimistic, it did snow last like April. Oh, yeah. 14th yeah or? big time i re- like the very beginning of april and then we had two blizzards like the get it or the, not to get it done the uh zumbro zumbro last year was crazy and that was the same time as the spring fever i ran spring fever last year it was 10 degrees with ice and snow yeah, ice and snow <laughs> so anyway we're in a good position to have some good racing but you never know what april can bring and with that actually that's a good segue nick wagner ran uh spring fever with me last year and uh, he's going to share a little bit about what, what has brought him to the group run. Um, Alex Rongstead is also in our group run. And we're going we're gonna to get into the Hear the Herd segment here on the Blue Ox Running Podcast. We have two guests instead of one. Uh, double, your, double your money, double your pleasure today, I guess. All right. All right. So we're hearing from the herd today. We have a couple of stories um, to share. And just to give you a precursor, we're going to get into the stories and everything, but our motto is fast or slow, let's go. So part of that is fast, right? So we want to know from the community, some of the faster runners, some of the some some of the mid-pack, some of the slower runners, we all know that we all have stories and there's kind of more than meets the eye than just looking at like race results and who's in the front of the pack, the, the middle of the pack and back of the pack. There's a, there's a couple of things that are common between Nick and Alex's story and we'll let them share that. But essentially, um, what I always see in a big group of runners is a lot of things, but we're all kind of the same, but different. And we've said that on the podcast before, there's a lot of commonality, but a lot of things you might not really realize with some of the faster runners with how vulnerable and how crappy their training can sometimes be, but also with some of the the life um, events that set them back. I think when I look at like professional runners and the really fast runners of the world, I always just think they're always just cruising. Their training is on Instagram. They've got these beautiful pictures of them running down a trail or running on the roads and doing a good track workout. And you kind of don't realize how human um, some of even the professional athletes can be with all sorts of things, with, with things that set them back physically, mentally, all that stuff. So we have a couple guys that are a little bit more in the front of the pack. Um, in our group run typically, but they want to share maybe a little bit more than, than meets the eye with, with their background and some setbacks they've had, especially physically. So Nick, let me know how you got into running. How did you get into blue ox running and kind of what's your background um, with your entry point into running? So I, um, I guess I started running in seventh grade, which would have been middle school for Regis. That's how they seventh and eighth. Yeah. Um, so you're from yeah. Eau Claire. Yeah. From Regis. Eau Claire. Yep. Awesome. So yeah, from Eau Claire, uh, went to school at Regis. Um, and I liked that, uh, cross country was, it was a lot of fun. Um, cause I did, uh, football the year before. And really? My, what position? What position football? I, Just center? Like defense. Yeah. yeah center. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was all of like a hundred pounds. Then. Yep. Yeah. I got wrecked <laughs> every game. <laughs> So, yeah, I didn't really enjoy it, but then I, I did cross-country. Um, my uncle had done cross-country, um, so that's kind of where the idea came from. And then, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was up towards the front in my team and in the races, and then, like, eighth grade, I won a whole bunch of races. I think every 
just about all of them except for one. Sweet. Uh, and my mom kind of jinxed me on that. She's like, you should, I won my first race and then she's like, you should win, uh, like all the rest of them, like try and win every race. And then the next race I got second. There, so it, like, go. there it went. Thanks mom. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, ever since, yeah, it just, that's what I've done. High school, uh, college, ran in college. And where'd you run in college? Uh, UW Platteville. Good. So right in the WIAC here, the conference in Wisconsin. Yeah. Super competitive. Yep. I mean, best they got a good country. program. Yeah. And yeah, Tom Anzac. Yeah. Great coach. Oh yeah. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then, yeah. Cool. So uh, when did you graduate college? 2016. Okay. So moved back to Eau Claire, kind of around family. Yeah. Uh, well, so it was back after, you know, for the summer after, um, I graduated and then in the fall moved to Phoenix. And so I was down there for about nine months um, yep. working with my girlfriend, Tegan, and then, who also is part of the Blue Ox Running Herd. Right. And it's her birthday today. Happy Shout birthday, out. Happy birthday, Tegan. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then she ran at Platteville, too, and ran in high school and everything. So both runners. And then, yeah. Cool. Um, so pretty typical middle school, high school, college progression. Alex, what about you? We're going to kind of tell these stories almost in parallel here. But your entry point into competitive running, or how did you get to the Blue Ox running herd group run yeah um sort of funny parallel with you uh i i went out for football and basketball and track in middle school and it was almost out of uh just laziness that i uh i was going into high school and i was dreading the idea of being in high school football because i was a tight end they like put me like right on the line there and i was this (laughs) tiny kid right and um so I, I tried to strike a deal with my parents. Uh, if I went out and ran one mile uh, every day of the summer, uh, if I could get away with not going out for fall sport. Really? So um, uh, from there, it just naturally led right into cross country. I had a buddy who had a similar thing where he um, he was he went uh, and did like took classes at at uh, the high school at North. Um, and then he would come back and as he, he didn't want to walk up the steps. So instead to go to his like fifth hour class. So instead he went to the cross country athletic meeting for, for the next fall. And I knew he was in it and you know, he was, he was best friend at the time. And, you know, and I think, so yeah, from the very start, there was this camaraderie, right? You're um, on a team. Yeah. You're not really bucking it alone or yep. anything like that. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I ran, you know, I ran JV that first year and just really fell in love with the the culture and the people, um, ended up, uh, ended up running varsity after that. And then, um, I was super humbled actually after my teammates nominated me to be captain the following year. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, Scott Hayden, I, I was captain with him. Yeah. Um, he's a local runner guy, super fast, super cool. Um, and yeah, it was just, cool. a, yeah, everything kind of led into that. So pretty similar uh, entry points as, as far as all four of us, mm-hmm. like middle school. And they're both from Eau Claire. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we got local area. boys. Love it. So, um, what kind of competitive, you know, races have you guys done since like college, Nick, you ran at college, um, Alex, what have you been up to since kind of those competitive days? Did you have a break or I know you did, was it the first, your first marathon last year? Yeah. Um, well, it was actually the fall of 2017. Oh yeah. 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 Yep. So when we opened the store. Yeah. Yeah. Right then. Um, that lined up really well. I actually had to get far away from the competitive side of things, yeah. um, after high school. Um, I think that was a big theme, uh, running all four of those years was just how, mentally exhausting um it was even just leading up to the race you know i would be i would not be at full energy going into you know this high energy race just because i had overanalyzed or thought you right. know, too much about it and um you know i was young and it all kind of makes sense that that would have it would have been the case so yeah. um i had kind of kind of fluctuated after high school i always kept it uh, you know as a as a part of part of you know what I had done and enjoyed doing but um it uh it it culminated um uh I I think it a pretty similar time frame actually in terms of racing because I uh first race uh since high school became um 
the Whistle Stop Half Marathon. Mm. That was just a month leading up to the yeah. Madison Marathon. Oh, so um, that was your first one since high school? Since high school, yeah. Got you. Yeah, and it went it went really well. It was a I I really like that distance. Yeah. Um, and that race is really beautiful too. Yeah. It's, you know, right in the fall. Um, so yeah, it uh, it, it, it it the as far as com- competition goes. Um, it, it has been pretty minimal, and yeah. I think that's what I've that's what I've needed, and definitely yeah. thrived from. So yeah, and then Alex isn't going to share, but like his first marathon, he qualified for Boston. That whistle stop half marathon went well, but it was a pretty natural like progression into that first marathon, Madison Marathon, right? Right. So he he definitely took a hold of really good training and was kind of kind of doing it on your own, essentially, and then set himself up for a really successful first marathon. And then Nick, like, what where have you been like the last couple? A um, couple of years, I guess you've been out of college, right? Just or did with- you take any time off? Did you just always run? Um, I pretty much always ran. So, yeah. like after that 2016 track season, I pretty much rolled it right into. The idea was to gear up for the Eau Claire Marathon, and I was yeah, I was doing like 600 minutes a week. Yeah, uh, that's like 10 hours, two a days. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I had a weird like work schedule too because I was working like a temp job that yep. was third shift. So oh, I was like in the morning, well, not the morning, when I woke up in the afternoon, like as the sun was setting, I'd go out, run, go to work, come back, right. run again, right. and then go to sleep. <laughs> yep. So I was, yeah, I was in pretty darn good shape too. Um, I think the first race I did after college was probably the Water Street Mile. Mm-hmm. I had um, a couple, well, a bunch of friends from college up. And they knew a bunch of people from the Eau Claire team around, you know, yeah, from racing them. So we were up there and did the Water Street Mile, and then there was the Beer Mile afterwards, right? And all that, you know. But um, I didn't do any races when I was in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just running a ton. Yeah, getting fit. Just a pile of <laughs> cool, cool. And and Alicia, I mean, so one of the things I love about this podcast is we can go a little bit deeper than honestly just some side conversations that we've had either at the group run i've heard a little sliver of nick's story and alex's but um i don't even remember kind of the timeline on when some of this happened and um nick one of your big setbacks with with not just with running but one of the big events that um you've now taken part of your life has been what like when did all that happen with your physical uh, condition that you have now, if you want to share a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, we were in Phoenix, uh, at the time and, um, probably the month leading into like Thanksgiving, uh, I was building back up to running and then I just kind of got really tired and just like, exhausted I didn't really understand why, but I kind of just figured it's, well, I'm in the desert. It's different than right. where I was before. So, Is this when you were running a lot, like 600 minutes a week? Um, or building back up to that? Building back up to it because with the move, I kind of like stopped running and then right. was looking for jobs and stuff. And once I got my job and then I started picking back up. Right. Uh, but then I was losing weight. Um, I was thirsty all the time. Uh, and then went home for Thanksgiving and I was just like, I was really like mentally fuzzy and just, I lost a ton of weight in like the couple of days I was home. And, and these, I, both of these guys are not big guys. Yeah. Nick, <laughs> Nick yeah. probably didn't have a lot of weight to lose, so, but like yeah. how much weight in a couple of days when you say that? That couple of days I probably lost over 10 pounds. Oh my God. So, I mean, I was gray and like shriveled up. Right person <laughs> right. barely alive and I was like I told my parents like yeah I should let's go to the hospital because I feel terrible and I, the plan was just to go once I got back to Phoenix but I don't think I don't know if I would have made it back wow jeez <laughs> so I went in and, and um someone uh one of the nurses could smell it on my breath the uh fruity uh odor essentially yeah and my blood sugar was like through the roof like yeah they tested it with a normal meter and it maxed it out at 600 um and then they did a lab and it was like 992 so <laughs> i was they're like yeah you have uh type 1 diabetes yeah <laughs> like big time right and put me on insulin like right away they just do right away yeah yeah they're just like yep you need it like which right now. nick isn't it i don't know a ton about diabetes but it's 
kind of a different situation, like your age for being diagnosed with yeah, it, Yeah, how correct? typical is it for someone that's healthy, that's running, that's whatever, 20-something? Because the couple people I knew found out about it, like, between maybe, like, fourth and middle school age. Fourth grade? Yeah. Yeah, younger, for the type 1? Yeah, type 1 is typically called, like, adolescent diabetes. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, that's, that's usually when you find out. Um, it does happen later. It's just more rare. Okay. Um, but it's funny because one of my teammates, like two years before, um, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes really? too. So ran with him and he was competing in college and pretty successful. Right, right, right. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Because um, it wasn't on my mind. Right. Like, why am I so thirsty? Well, I'm in the desert. Right. <laughs> it's dry right. here. <laughs> right. And I feel like distance runners, when you're in like a high training volume too, you're just kind of like... Well, some some more than others are just kind of like, uh, oh, this is this is kind of part this of the deal. I feel. I feel tired. This is like you can chalk a lot up to. Well, I'm just in a high training volume, right? Or yeah. you, you're just kind of hard headed about it too. You're not really taking care of everything that you should be. Yeah. So yeah, nothing. Yeah, all those things. Yeah, were definitely. Wow. Probably just I thought running related, and they weren't. And it, yeah, it was not on my radar. So hospitalized. Yeah. For was, how long? Yeah, for like. It was like five or six days. It just, wow. Because I was in like ICU for a couple. Um, yeah. Wow. Because it, I mean, it took a while to get me back down. Like right. they can't just toss a bunch of insulin in and drop you. It's not like you can just eat and that's when it's set on like that weekend. It's not like you can just balance everything out with eating more or less of like, how did they actually balance out your blood sugar with it that high? Like, was your body responding to nutrition or was it just not? Uh, no. So without insulin in my body, um, what, what was happening was none of the sugars in my blood were getting pulled in by any of like my organs or muscles and it was just whatnot. all in your blood, all in my blood. So everything I was eating, <laughs> it just went, all those carbs went straight into my blood and it sat there. Right. And, um, Part of like I was going to the bathroom like all the time. It was like every half hour or right. less. It's like on the dot. Got to go. Like I cannot hold it any longer. Um, that's like my body was trying to get rid of it. And right. It's not a very efficient way to get rid of it, but it was trying, you know, to get rid of it. All those extra sugars. Right. But, so yeah, everything was starving. Like my brain, heart. I mean, just everything was starving. It had no energy. And then the weight loss is my body in response to starving is trying to burn or convert all that fat right. into carbs, which is just going into my blood right, and then going nowhere. Right. So I had like maple syrup blood right. when I went to the hospital. Which um, isn't being used for energy. Like your right. body's just trying to make energy and it's not using it. It's yeah. just sitting. It, yeah. It just, it can't pull it back out right. and use it. So. Dang. Yeah. How scary was that? I mean, you're with your family. <laughs> yeah. And they obviously, I mean, they could tell like I was pretty light when I got home. Right. And then, I mean, I just. Yeah, I just felt terrible. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And it was like the day before I was going to go back. Right. Um, and it's like, yeah, let's just go to the hospital and see what's up. Because this is like, I could not keep my mouth closed. Like it was so, my face was so sucked in. Like it was just, yeah, it was an effort to like close my lips. So when's the, I know you, I mean, there's obviously a change in your life now with blood sugar and monitoring it and stuff. And we'll, we'll get to that. But when's the next time, like when was the recovery kind of trauma time over like when were you kind of back to normal weight living a normal life um the weight came back probably in like a week yeah i guess i mean i ballooned up like my body finally had like hydration it was like rehydrated like it was dehydrated that whole time um how did they reverse it? Like, is there a super serum? <laughs> that, <laughs> no, like... so like they had like a bunch of saline bags. Like I went through, like when they first brought me in, like they hooked me up and my body like immediately pulled it in. Right. Like, it was just was, like kneading it. It was a, like, I don't, I forget what the quantity of the bag was, but I ate it in like five minutes. Oh it was my God. gone. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it took a while. Like they hooked me up to insulin and they were basically just like constant drip feed. Yep. Um, to bring it down. They just have to bring it down slow. So it took a while. So I was high for a long time, um, which then, yeah, the eyes were like the last thing to really recover. Like I had, my vision was fine when I was in the hospital, but then when I left and went back to work, like my nearsighted vision was like 
nothing it was just really? blurry so i actually bought like this really cheap magnifying glass so i could do work and like using this magnifying just glass to look at these <laughs> sweet sheets of paper <laughs> so you do my work off sherlock of. holmes yeah because I, I just could not see yeah. them yeah. so that's 2016 obviously nick has recovered fully from that um and we'll learn a little bit more about what he has to do day to day and especially with running like with blood sugar that's a big part of monitoring that but alex 2017 uh madison marathon went great mm-hmm. um hungry for more uh 2018 about a year ago right now um looking forward to the eau claire marathon i believe right yeah yep. and then walk us through all of 2018 yeah and then how life is the same or different now 2019 sure um so yeah, post post Madison, um, I was really inspired. I, I thought it, you know I felt felt like it was a good race. Um, there were there were things I I wanted to work on, dial in. Um, so I started keeping a more. I actually it, it coincided with getting a, a new Garmin watch, and that really helped with you know keeping really. I, almost, didn't, tell, almost, I didn't tell them to say. That. <laughs> well, it was it, they were a little too meticulous for yeah, me. That's right. um, they you know just the way they broke down every every workout. You know, you could take that to whatever degree you right. choose. Right. Um, All the so, numbers. Yeah, you'll notice actually. I don't have one on now because yep. I it's it uh, it changed it for me. I, I it kind of rewired how I how I like to run, and so I I got really into um, just the week to week. You know, really getting into that long run, and this is you know in the dead of winter last yep. last year. So it was it was trying in that sense, but like I knew. I knew it was Eau Claire and I know the city and I knew I could train all over it. So I would, I would map out all my routes. I would, um, you know, I, I know I came into the store pretty regularly and just talked about training and different workouts. Um, and so I felt super ready, you know, I I had put in, I put in the miles, I'd put in the work. Um, and the big thing I didn't anticipate on race day was the heat. It was a, it was a factor that just wasn't right. even on my mind from, you know, winter running. It's, you know, you're running in the cold and you just really, you have to, you have to layer up to do that. So, um, and a big, big thing that definitely, uh, you know, is now very apparent to me is how, uh, how much you learn in every race, you yeah. know, just, just what you, the little things you glean from, from the even just the little nuances of how a race goes and one thing that i think of is right when right when the uh the onset and i'll actually kind of explain that in a minute but it was right at like mile uh like 13 yeah uh, right on the back end which, the I, which is really it's the loneliest part of the Oakland i love that Marathon. part and i'm sure you know what it's, it's beautiful. so beautiful it's but beautiful. it's a little different on i race like day. it too but on race day um gosh it'd be real nice to have yeah. a, a nice crowd of people there i have uh, plans and schemes <laughs> for future years of having a good hillbilly backwoods yeah. cheer station oh god i'll i'll contribute yeah. to that um so anyhow uh that was when they uh, handed out the wet towels. Yep. Yep. Um, and I remember you saying after the fact that you had taken one and put one under your cap. Yep. And uh, and I did not have the uh, just the insight to kind of do that. And I also, um, at the time, I was really inspired by uh, the runner, um, Noah Drotti. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought his vibe was really cool. And he had like the long hair and the mustache and just sort, of the, <laughs> yeah. sort of the rebel attitude. And so I... I had my hair down for that race, yep. um, and I had trained with it like that. But it's a whole, it's a whole lot hotter. Um, it increases, you know, your body temperature quite a bit by doing that. So, this is all stuff I just was, you know, right. was unaware of. Um, and I could feel, I could feel my hand starting to go numb around around mile fourteen. Um, I felt, you know, I started getting delirious. I started getting tingly. And I actually associated that with a feeling that I remember uh, my first varsity race cross country uh, down in Alaska. I, uh, you know, I, I remember wearing like thick socks that race. Like I, I, this was my, you know, I was stupid and young and just didn't really get it. And so I didn't hydrate properly. And about 150 meters out from the finish of that race, I collapsed. Um, I, I remember only being able to move my neck. Um, everything else just locked up and they took me to the emergency room and I was diagnosed with heat, ex- heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and I was dehydrated. So I, I knew those feelings right. and I knew it was coming. So I was about we were on the bike trail. Um, so like mile 
mile 17, 18 at that point. And I'm seeing my, my parents are, are incredibly supportive and they were, they were on their bikes and handing off nutrition throughout mm -hmm. the race. And, um, I just look over at my dad and I'm like, little this, fuzzy. This, 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 uh, this ain't going, this ain't going to go my way. <laughs> so, uh, it'd yeah. be interesting to know what you actually said. Cause like in our heads, like when you're in the race, you're probably like yeah. telling your dad something uh -huh. and you probably whizzed by him and you're like, this is hot. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it really, there was like this moment where I knew, I knew that this is right. what I had to do. And I, yeah, wait, like, you mean pull the plug? Yeah. Pull yeah. The plug. Yeah. DNF. And, yeah. The, uh, and like all the training, I kind of, it all like sort of flashed between like before my eyes right. at that moment. I'm like, it's well, not a good shoot. feeling. Yeah. So, so that ended up happening. And, um, and that's your last race that you've done. Actually, I did run the Oz run. Five, oh yeah. Yeah. 5K yeah. Yeah. After yeah. that. And I, I, I pulled that one off and it was, it was fun. It was, oh, good, yeah. it was a good confidence. Boost. Yeah. That was the same spring. Yeah. Gotcha. But the last marathon. Yep. Yep. Last marathon. Um, so I had to recalibrate. I was kind of weighing if I would, if I would maybe start over and like, or run cause grandma's was coming up right. in like a month and I didn't know what the conditions were going to be. And you know, I had mentally been through a marathon. Like I was, I had, I had trained for it, even though my body didn't get through the full 26.2. I was, I had done it mentally as far as I was concerned. So I decided to take it, take a big step back, uh, start training for, uh, twin cities in the fall. Yep. And, um, that, I guess that coincides with, with where this all lines up because, so, um, I was trying to, I was, I remember I was trying to kind of coordinate this, this, this morning group run with a couple, couple fast guys. I remember you guys came down, um, people, I mean, essentially people training for, for, you know, big miles for, um, for races running, running pretty fast paces. And so, um, I was waking up early in the mornings to, to do most of my running and I'm, um, I'm a bartender down at the, down at the Lakely. So I was working these late nights. So I was stretching, just, just stretching my body really thin and, you know, mentally I, you know, looking back, I wasn't in the greatest place. And, um, so it all kind of culminated. It was the end of June. It was exactly a week before the 4th of July, actually. Um, and my, my folks, I was living with my folks at the time and they had just left, uh, they'd taken a week, um, to go on vacation somewhere. So it was, it was this kind of poetic moment where like, I'm all alone. Right. And, um, I remember starting, ju just starting to feel sick. Um, it, it felt like the flu or something. And I just kept thinking like every day I was going to just wake up and be fine, just get some rest. Um, but it did not, it, that, that was not the case. It, yeah. uh. I don't know what uh, viewers know of uh, what you guys know of Lyme disease, but it uh, it really manifests in, in different ways in, in virtually everyone. But um, common symptoms are just uh, whole body aches, just muscle aches. Um, uh, the the main one for me, I mean, joint pain, um, just like overall grossness. But the worst one were the headaches. Um, it was like this whoop whoop whoop. Well, well, and it was constant. Yeah. Um, and I could find, you know, I, I found solace from it. And actually the takeaway that like the, the really inspirational thing for me with it was, um, the only piece I found in that, in those seven days I remember is laying completely, I had to lie completely flat on my bed. I couldn't have a pillow. I, I couldn't actually even like have any, I couldn't wear anything like literally any outside influence, uh, like on my body I could feel. And it almost, it was like amplified to right. the hundredth degree. And, um, so just, I had to close my eyes, like turn off my thoughts. And then right there is where I could find like this peace, this, like this very, this, this very peaceful feeling that I, I have carried through. Like it's, right. it's, I'm kind of getting chills thinking about it. Cause it really was a, that's the, the true takeaway from this, uh, this like, Awful, right. awful feeling. Um, so seven days yeah. laying around. And did you around. do treatment with that? As I did. Well? Yeah. Okay. So when my parents came back, because I didn't, I didn't have health insurance at the time either. So that was another thing that was right. really keeping me just, just out of it. And so my parents came home and they took one look at me and they're like, "We're, we're taking yeah. you to the urgent care." <laughs> yeah. And um, since I didn't have health insurance, I didn't actually get the like the formal testing done. Um, but the doctor 
you know, took one look at me and he saw it, you know, they looked at the rash and it was like, and the rash actually, I just chalked up as like a chafing rash too. Right. I didn't even mm. think really about that. So another, another normal runner lifestyle <laughs> thing that sets us back. You don't really think of all the options. That's just, it's just it's a bunch just of chafing. chafing. <laughs> I always have chafing. It's my weekly chafe. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so how's life different now? Like, so, you, so Alex is, there was a time in last, this is kind of last summer, fall, where uh, wasn't able to come to the group run, mm-hmm. really out of it at, at all from any kind of running. Um, and you, it seems like, just from my limited perspective, kind of built back on really slowly, enjoying the run again, mm-hmm. been around the group run a little bit more, but do you feel like you're kind of back to 100% or 90% or is there anything you need to like keep tabs on right now with, with that condition? I think, I think mentally I'm... Uh, I I feel I feel back to equilibrium right. mentally, um, you know for the most part. I think I mean physically it's hard to gauge that when you you know when you're logging right. 60, 70 mile weeks. But like I I think my outlook has never been better. Right. You know um, I'm I running is just such a, a an incredible thing that's so it's so personal and and the reason we do it. Um, you know, comes down to the individual, but like for, for me, it's always been getting out of my head, getting to, getting to create a, an experience that's just my own, you know, whether I'm running with someone or running alone, I, I get this little space in, right. in time. And, um, and so like the, the fundamentals of that and, and just really connecting with myself through it, that's, that's been, that's you've job been able one. to get back to that yeah. r- regardless of like, yeah crazy competitive training and stuff. I I do not have the condition or the story that these guys do, but I did have a little bit of a setback with a really normal everyday kind of tendonitis, tight knee type of situation in the fall where I took time off and it kind of stinks to take time off, but it gave me more perspective. And I think you guys would hopefully agree that like, um, what you, re- you can, it's really easy to get wrapped up in the competitive part and the training part, but then when everything is kind of taken away, You know, like even just baseline enjoying the morning with a run or being able to move and kind of have that baseline fitness to just enjoy running, much less like the competitive and the training part is, is a lot bigger chunk than I always thought it was, Mm -hmm. you know, because when you, when you're able to just tack on, oh, I can like go for a run, like with my kids, or I can like enjoy the sunrise and on the trails, like you don't realize that's actually like 90% of it. And then the, like being fit for a race or a goal or a time or the workouts and the track workouts and all that, that's kind of like the icing on the cake. And it's easy to forget that when you're in the middle of it, that that feels like the whole enchilada most of the time, but it's actually just the icing on the cake. Nick, how is your running different now? I mean, do you have to watch your blood sugar? Is it totally different? Is it just kind of a minor thing? Or like, how do you come away from um, how quickly that set on to where it could either flare up again or are you just on it uh yeah there's no flaring up it's it's there 24 7 all the time you wear a pump correct just giving people a little or no no i I do um pen injections um but i do have a continuous glucose meter so that's like stuck in my body and but it it gives me like a graph numbers nice that you would like (laughs) yeah that's right just give me that (laughs) give me those numbers every day um (laughs) Yeah, all sorts of data streaming off my body. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I was like, it's like, oh, this is actually really bad for Nick, but it's very interesting. Let's put this on a graph and project it on the wall. It's like, no, that's actually bad. I mean, have you come across since your incident in 2016 where you got to like, like kind of take action quicker than normal? Or is it just pretty normal monitoring, getting your sugars up or down how you need to? Um, I mean, I haven't had too many like... I haven't really had like emergencies right. so so much. Um, yeah, nothing that I'd call an emergency. But yeah, running is totally different now. Like when I come home, I have to eat a snack uh, depending on what my blood sugar's at and where it's going. Yeah, up or down. Um, and then I gotta get. I have to take like bring gels with me. Yeah, uh, regardless of how far I'm going, even yeah, if it's yeah, yeah. like a half hour easy run, like I still need it. Um, right, I might not take any, but I need to have them. It's kind of a always come prepared situation. Right. Because you could be out on the county roads and if your blood sugar is doing. County? County. Counting? On the county roads? County roads. What did you say? Uh, What did did you think I said? (laughs) On the county roads. 
You were like canny road. On the canny road? <laughs> on the county roads, out in the middle of Wisconsin, like we all like, yeah, or you're on the trails. On the trails? Did I say that word all right? Yeah. Sorry. All right. You could be out in the middle of nowhere running and you get in trouble if you don't have the sugar, right? Yeah. I mean, if my blood sugar is tank, um, yeah, it could be, I mean, as bad as like lights out, like <laughs> I'm like unconscious and then maybe even dead. Right. I don't know. Wow. Like, Low end, I mean, you can get like seizures and stuff, and right. that can be really bad. Um, high end is, you know, coma um, and, and dying. Dang. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's serious stuff. Yeah, it's... That's not just being like, oh, I was, a, I was like... Like when I think of someone going for a long run and not bringing enough gels, it's like I kind of bonked, right? Yeah, and you, I had to get back to that gas station and buy a Gatorade. It's like, no, seizures... And you just said the death word. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And I don't know how quick, right? you know, but, dying would right, you know, right, right. set in. But it's it's there. Um, and, I mean, if I'm unconscious, right. just on the side of the road, right. uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anyone's going to see me. Right. Do so, you yeah. run with your phone? Yeah. So I use my phone. That's, that's how I see that um, uh, continuous see? glucose meter you data. You have this on. Yeah, road ID. Yep. So Good. If someone does find me, they know what the heck's going on. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a lot more prep work right. going into it, and then um, a lot of trial and error to figure out what needs to happen at different intensities uh, as far as taking gels throughout the run. What about during race? race, like race day nutrition? Does it affect at all, like the the um, like your nutrition plan? I, you're getting ready for the half, right? Yeah. How many halves have you done? Or what's the longer races um, that you've done where you might need to do some fueling on the run? I did one half uh, in Bemidji last year, yep. last fall. So most most of the shorter races. Shorter 5K, races. 5K, 10K. 5K, like, um, you don't, I don't have to take anything right. during that because adrenaline, adrenaline releases carbs in your blood. Right. And I mean, it just, yeah, it sends my blood sugar up to right around 200 just yeah. with adrenaline, like, crazy you know, before this. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, Nick's like dialed into his number. I mean, we yeah. all, that all is a reality for us too with adrenaline, but you just know more about what your body actually naturally does. Right. Yeah. Race day. Yep. So yeah, for the short races, I don't probably don't have to take anything. Um, but then with the long ones with the bigger demand for energy, yeah, I do absolutely have to take stuff and that yeah. even for this upcoming race, I don't really know. I had one race, but I don't know, you know, Every race is going to be different, right. and the day is different, and, and your heat. mood is different, right. and the conditions are different, so things are going to be different every time, and it's not like you go out every weekend and run a half marathon. Right. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a big collection of data on right. what a half marathon race day is going to be like. Right. So and even this one's going to be... The Eau Claire half, correct? Yeah, Eau Claire, okay. this Eau Claire half, I'm yeah. still going to be kind of winging it a little bit. I have a plan, but yeah. Got your emergency gel or two. Yeah. But I mean, I'm going to have just a pile of it. <laughs> pile of smart. I see sometimes when you come back from the group run, like Tegan will like hand you Smarties. And at first I was like, sweet, I want some Smarties. You I know, think but I that's said very that too. intentional. I was like, I want some candy. I'm so like Before oblivious. I, knew that about you. I know, I'm just like taking Nick's candy and he's like kind of like a little woozy. I'm like, yeah. oh, give me some Smarties. So, yeah. so I'm sorry if I ever stole your diabetes no, I don't, candy. I don't think you ever did. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Alex, how's life's different now? I know that you're kind of running easier. Um, do you have any, your training is a little bit more carefree. Do you have any aspirations of hopping in another race in the next, I don't know, next couple hours or the next couple of years? Um, I've, I've put a little thought into running the whistle stop again. Yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, as far as uh, distances go, I really like that half. Um, I think if I am to, uh, if I run... Uh, if I run another marathon, which I, you know, I'd like to, um, right. it definitely is, is a part of the drive. Um, I'd like to run Eau Claire again. Yeah. There's kind of it's a it's killer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I know that like it, and it, you'll get some redemption. Mm -hmm. I think, I think there's probably there, something there's there too. There's a little bit of, a little bit of redemption needed. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, I, I, it, it's not, it's not about competing right now. It's right. really just about the love of it. And, um, you know, we went out just for like 30 minutes the other morning and, yeah. um, been really actually purposely dialing in and dialing it down to like 20, 20, 30 minutes and just, you know, whatever pace I'm feeling. And like, I, I, 
this transition from from winter into spring is yeah. just my favorite time yep. of year. It's it's everything's coming alive again, and and so um, you know it's it's been excellent being outside. Um, yeah, so I, I I'm as far as as far as going forward, um, just making sure that every time I'm going out, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm good with good with me. Yeah. That's something we we came across with Dina's conversation too. Is like. Um, things could always be better, but they could always be worse too. I mean, she had cancer. So yeah. like just being alive, putting your feet on the floor in the morning yep. and then being able to, you know, do something you love and then being able to compete. Like you just have these different layers, but um, I think we see a little bit more sobered, sobered up when something does take, take it away, you know, for, for better, or for worse. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do the speed round. You guys have anything else you want to say about kind of what, what's happened in the last couple of years? Um, any big sh- shifts or adjustments that you're still dealing with? You know, not off the top of my head. I I want to thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is fun. Stuff. Literally, since since uh, since you guys opened, which actually, you know what? I want to take this opportunity. Oh, let's do real, it real quick. Because uh, so you opened about a month before my first marathon, and it was it was a big deal to me because I you know I'd never run one. I was running the one that my dad had run. And speaking of birthdays, by the way, uh, my birth I'm turning 30 on the 14th. Mm. Oh, so maybe yeah. when this airs, um, that'll have happened. But my dad and I share a birthday. I was Sweet. born on his 28th birthday. And so um, I really wanted to run that Madison Marathon. And you guys opened right then, and I needed shoes. Weren't um, we not even open one time you came in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I, I did you the, the tre- yeah. Yes. We're like, let's see if the, all this you equipment were, works. Yeah, you were Go testing. on the treadmill. Yep, yep. <laughs> and and so, The monitor's <laughs> broken. Uh, keep running, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you hooked me up with a pair of Convara 8s. Yes. And... We're up to Kinvara 10 now. This yeah, is a, I know. a flashback. And, and I'll tell you what, they have become more of a, uh, a, a like a shorter distance shoe. Yeah. So they're not entirely broken. You know, they're not, they're, yeah. they're still active. Totally dead. They're actually looking pretty good. But I wanted to. Oh, uh, we're going to get it yeah. back to the store. You know, I this want is the other a moment. One. Give me the other no, one. No, this is a moment because there's, there's a lot of, without going into the whole thing, there's a lot of consternation about like, where did we make our first dollar? Or like, who bought the first pair of shoes? Who did the first gate analysis? <laughs> Obviously, we had like a grand opening and i actually have the pair of shoes that we sold there first yeah but alex actually got his foot in the door before that so this is actually the first pair of shoes (laughs) and then we also have another uh, i sold my brother-in-law a garmin before that so there was a whole sale there and then before that we sold like a random towel at a fit expo (laughs) like this kid walked up with some quarters he paid in change (laughs) and that was actually our first dollar and 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 i was sitting there like is this actually like this is actually our first, this is a big moment right now. And everyone's yeah. like, I'm like fumbling with change. And so I actually saved the four quarters. Oh, beautiful. It wasn't our first dollar that we're going to frame, but these are very important. This is the first pair of shoes we ever sold at Blue Ox Running. Ooh. And I wanted to just share, Nick and Alex are pretty regular attenders in yeah. our store. We've gotten to know them personally, yeah. not just running related, but so it's been a pleasure getting to know them and I've run with both of them. And oh, some it's of great. Runs. Yeah. It's stuff like this that's so helpful. I mean, even before we started the podcast today, we're talking about Cole and Steph just had their baby, Yeah, you know, and we've yeah. seen, we've seen some guys. people just with through the, through the group, you know, make friendships that weren't there before. It's, it's kind of like, oh, we just kind of want to go run with some people and Nick and I. Yeah. yeah, Nick and I. Yeah, so Nick and Alex didn't know each other. Yeah, now they're doing a podcast together. That's right, sharing diabetes and Lyme stories. That's right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do speed round, uh, which is basically quick interval session of questions. So we're gonna do three to each of you. Okay. And we're gonna alternate. Oh gosh. You going first? Sure. I'll go to Nick first. Um, so they both have to answer my question. We're gonna do Nick first. So you, then me, then okay. you on Nick, and then. Um, we'll switch since to... you guys are local boys, um, favorite place to run in Eau Claire? Oh, uh, probably um, down below the university along the river, like by Little Niagara. Mm, that, mm-hmm. Those trails are always my favorite. Like in high school, we go in there and kind of get lost or just figure out the path. Yeah, that, yeah. That's my favorite, so on the though. other bank from the real yeah. buckshot path. Go check yeah, it out. South yeah, side, there. On the south side. Like an actual trail. Yep. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So I was gonna share something similar, but to glom onto that favorite bridge to run on in Eau Claire. Oh, um, the high, high bridge is pretty cool right now. Yep. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> and right. um, so non-running related, f- favorite thing to do besides running. Um, 
probably go like I don't know, go to like a race or something like motorsports and stuff. Oh, That's sweet! Yeah, see, motorsports. learning new things. Yeah, I didn't know Nick <laughs> yeah. was a motorsports guy. All right, we'll have to do that as part of the group run somehow. Some monster truck rally night. All right, Alex. First question: What is your favorite um, style of running hat? My favorite. Oh, well, obviously the uh, the Blue Ox <laughs> trucker hat. It's a freebie. Yeah, sorry. I'm, uh, I've been I've been wearing proudly since. All right, day that's one. That, uh, this is the real question. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite type of shoe or favorite shoe that's non-running? Um, geez, these guys. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, the Saucony yeah, Bullets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was doing. I needed some casual shoes when I was when I was running, and I went to Saucony's website because of the Convaras and saw they had a whole nice nice line of of casual wear shoes. Yeah, it's like they have a whole catalog of just originals and casual yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. got old school Asics on. Like I've the got Tigers. my Saucony Bullets on yeah, yeah. too. Look at that. What do you have on, Lisha? Running shoes. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> What do you think this is? <laughs> okay, um, yeah. just because Alex is so known for his long hair oh. and mustache, um, do you prefer your hair up or down? When running or uh, in general? When running. Um, That's a loaded question. He's shoot. like, in the morning, in the evening? <laughs> I know, he's like, when I'm feeling <laughs> frisky, what, like, what, what do you mean, up or down? That's too simple. Uh, that That's a, actually a really good question because I... I I think in terms of running, um, I would love to, I mean, there's something about just wearing it down when you're running or it's just like, <laughs> did you just go like this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally, I <laughs> had shake it around. super long hair in high school. I mean, I have long hair now, but I ran a couple races with yeah. my hair down intentionally uh-huh. just to be different. Uh-huh. You know, there, there was a run, actually Scott, Scotty's brother, uh, Corey, Corey uh, yeah. he used to have a giant mane and, <laughs> and he was, he, he, <laughs> For for real, I remember those early formative moments of him watching him run these incredibly fast races, and and it just flew, you know, yeah, just flew behind him. But it I just mean, followed him. If we're being practical here, I I prefer to wear my hair up when I run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Adam. Last question. All right. Um, so, have you ever considered the a change up in facial hair? And oh I don't mean gosh. shaving. It. <laughs> I mean growing the beard as epic as the oh, mustaches. Oh, uh, well, now. Uh, I, I did that. I've done that before. Oh. Uh, I was a little more recluse when I did that. I was uh, actually living up at my at my family's cabin, um, so it was a bit re- reflective of that time. And I I don't I don't think it looks that good. Yeah. Um, I mean that's just me. But well, I uh, think when when you get your redemption year at Eau Claire Marathon, yeah. you and Jake are going to have to do the flip flop switch, <laughs> and he's going to have to do the epic marathon mustache because you know that thing is just going to crush. Yep. Yep. And then you'll have to do the the long scraggly. <laughs> it's definitely. And scraggly. I'll act like I'll do something and then and then back out. <laughs> 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 like I am this year. Awesome. Well, that kind of wraps it up. We're about up on time here, and the store has actually been open for a few minutes, but hey. no one's come in yet, so that's helpful for the podcast um if you guys are watching this listening to this uh, feel free to comment and let us know any topics or guests that you want us to have on blueoxrunning.com has all the information blueoxrunning.com slash podcast has all the episodes and of course facebook instagram all that good stuff but we are going to end the episode with our good old-fashioned slogan all together now and this is the first time that nick and alex are going to share the microphone <laughs> And rather than pass it around, but one, two, three. Fast, fast or, or slow, slow, let's, let's go. go. Fast, 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 fast. Or slow. Let's go. Fast or slow. Let's go. Fast or slow. Let's go. Do you need to shut off the video?